Hello and welcome to NewsLick, this program with Real News. Today we'll discuss the effect of the demonetization, what we call the demonetization, but really deflating the economy by a huge amount. We have with us Surajit Bajumdar and Vikas Ravel, and uh, both are economists, and we'll discuss what's the likely impact on the economy. First, quick question. How much of the economy has been re-monetized after 86% of the cash was drawn? Some well, according figures. to the latest figures are available up to 27th, uh, while about 14 and a half lakh crores of currency that was in use was deactivated by the decision of the aid. Only about two and a half lakh crores has actually gone back in. So it's still about 12 lakh crores less than what was in circulation in the economy on the 8th. So less than a third of the total uh, currency that was in use on the 8th is in use at the moment. How much of the money that was withdrawn has now been put back into the economy? 17, around 17 percent has been put back. So at the moment 83 percent is still out of the amount that was originally withdrawn. Yes. So what is the likely impact? on the economy? Well, since less than a fifth has actually been put back into circulation, it would mean that even if you are able to replace at the same rate as you're doing right now, uh, it would take 100 days or more than three and a half months for that uh, replenishment to take place. But however, you started with a situation where you already had some old new currency printed. Whatever you're now adding is something that has to be printed over this period and it doesn't seem that it is going to be possible to print all the required currency within this particular period. So it's more than three and a half months is what you're going to face uh, this problem of uh, a shortage of currency in the economy. But the really the effect has been much more on the rural economy, the agrarian economy. Can you tell us what is the situation particularly in, in, in view of the fact that this is also the sowing season. So the effect of lack of liquidity would be really more. So you actually already had rural economy under huge distress because of two years of successive drought. Sort of all the sort of whole context of withdrawal of public investment and so on. And then comes the, the demonetization. Now, demonetization actually comes at a particularly bad time for agriculture because, as you said, it's uh, rabi harvest, uh, kharif harvest just got over. It was time for, for rabi sowing. Now, such a thing typically would set in motion very complex dynamic in the rural economy, pushing people into distress, pushing people into indebtedness, and you know, deeply affecting agricultural workers. You know, one part of it is ag agriculture, what happens to the farming community itself. But it's also a large part of the rural economy is also inf informal in other ways. In fact, that's also been hit because it appears that the rural banks either don't have cash or really they're, they're catering to a much larger set of people. And people have to walk long distances to the, come to the bank and not get any money. So, is it is it also the rest of the rural economy? Is well, also you basically have a situation where agricultural workers, uh, poor peasants are being paid in old currency, which they then go to Mahajans to convert at a commission of anything from 25% to 40%. As a result, this basically means the effective wages fall. Uh, their, their incomes take a huge hit. So, there is a double blow to the poor. One in terms of the farm incomes, agricultural labor, small peasant and so on. And the second, the family members who are actually supplementing this income by working in the towns, they also seem to have gone back because no work is available in the towns because again, same reason. So is it also going to, is it also hitting? The Absolutely, completely. The informal labor, both rural and urban, agriculture and non-agriculture and construction would be one major sector because construction over the last 10 years or so has really emerged as a sector that absorbs a lot of residual labor. And suddenly all of that just comes to a standstill. No, there, there's no work, people go back. The other thing is that we are actually, you know, it's incredible how little we think of rural India. I mean, think of public distribution system. How do people go and buy grain now? Because you, you don't have money, you don't have cash. You, you've, you've done something with petrol pumps. Petrol pumps are allowed to take 500 rupees. What about ration shops? 
I mean, nobody's even talked about ration shops. When it comes to the industrial sector, other sectors of the economy, what has been the impact? See, the process that is at work is essentially one in which once you've withdrawn so much currency from circulation, spending activity is bound to come down. So its first effect is whatever is produced and yet to be sold doesn't get sold. The industrial sector always has stocks of goods that are produced which have to be sold. So that process of that movement stops. The process of producing also gets disrupted because A, goods are not moving out and B, because you're not in a position often to purchase all the inputs if you require currency. Particularly in the unorganized manufacturing activities, there would be large use of currency. The organized sector may not be using so much currency, but they also need currency to pay wages for various other kinds of activities that are required for daily production activity. So there will be a loss of work where people on the one hand face the problem that the process by which they receive money to spend, which is their work, that process gets disrupted. So they're not receiving money as income and they're also not being able to spend the money that they already have earned. You, you take a whole bunch of industries in and around the country, uh, Tirupur, the textile, uh, the garment manufacturing sector, all of them seem to be slowing down. They, they, it, was, it was felt that maybe after two, three weeks, things would become normal. Therefore, they did not send people back immediately. But now all of them seem to be closing down. You see, because if you have this process where the inability to spend the money that you have leads to a disruption of production and the process by which income is generated, then the following effect of that is that the income that people would spend has not got created. So the consequences for demand are not just the immediate effects, but the loss of income that people are suffering, that will have an effect on the demand even beyond this immediate period. You know, a quick question to both of you. Uh, what is the likely impact in the next six months in the economy? Well, what the effect on calculated GDP will be, I cannot say because our GDP figures themselves are now very suspect. Uh, so I no, can't say what's going to happen on that. But if for a three month period, which is one quarter, if you have roughly 10% of economic activity disrupted, that's two and a half percent of your GDP gone, annual GDP gone. And of course, the effects of that go beyond that. See, when economic activity gets disrupted, so lots of small units will get disrupted. Shortage of cash will lead to various ways of trying to make up for that. People will go into debt. And the effects, therefore, on the production process will continue way beyond these three or four months. And if there is a disruption of economic activity, there is no automatic process in the kind of economy we have of bringing it back on track. So it's not that if you disrupt, it will just bounce back tomorrow once you put the money back in. Now, what's going to happen effectively is that to a large extent, people are going to have to borrow to survive during these months. So you, you go to your, your grocery store and you, you basically pick up goods on credit. Now, when things get monet re-monetized, eventually people would have to pay that debt what happens to the prices then? Because your production, not, you've not had your production. So what explains this uh, kind of decision? Do you think it's essentially to force the economy to move into the Paytm kind of channels which Modi supports? Even if one is thinking in terms of moving towards a cashless economy and promoting other things, the infrastructure required for that and the conditions required for that simply do not exist in the Indian economy as of now. We don't have those conditions even in much more advanced economies. Forget about India, where so many people don't have bank accounts. Banks are very far away. Even uh, there is the so-called digital divide. Uh, people don't have access to all the equipment required for that, nor can they afford it. And a large number of transactions, their size and magnitude and nature are such that cash is the more convenient way and the more economical way of uh, uh, undertaking payment. So it is, you don't have the wherewithal at the moment for a cashless economy. The other thing is that it really reflects somewhere how little the powers that be know what India is. I mean, it's, it's, it's obscene when you hear on the radio or the TV an advertisement telling people 
pick up the smartphone, use something like Paytm and pay. I mean, do they know what they are talking about? I mean, do they know what people, the, you know, destitution and poverty poor working classes of this country live in? I mean, do, do they have any idea of what this country is about? Okay, on that note, that the Indian people are going to be hit, are continuing to be, uh, this hit is going to continue for months to come. The economy is going to take a hit. What benefits it will have for the ruling dispensation, we have yet to see. Thank you very much for joining us on News Click. Do keep watching News Click for further episodes on these issues.